please let me know in the comment section which bag you would go for. Would you opt for the Kelly 20 or would you prefer the Kelly Pochette? I would love to know. Me personally, It's taken me a little while, but I'm finally getting around to doing a deep dive on my recently acquired Kelly Pochette. And we're also going to be comparing it to its cousin, the Mini Kelly 22. So if you'd like to find out everything that there is to know about these two incredibly popular and insanely difficult to get mini takes on the iconic Kelly bag, here are my thoughts, my experience with which bag is more difficult to get and also some facts then please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and keep on watching honestly there is so much to discuss about these two bags that i don't even know where to begin so i'm just going to start talking and see where that takes us but i think the first thing that would be great to clear up before we get any further is the naming of these two bags because that can get quite confusing so technically the official name of this bag is the Kelly Mini, but just like most people online, I myself call this bag the Kelly Pochette. And then if you look at the box of this bag, which I usually just call the Kelly Mini, the official name of this is the Kelly Mini 2 Mini. So this is the original Mini Kelly, and then this is the reinvented version of it, which launched initially as a limited edition bag back in 2015. But most people these days refer to this as the Kelly Pochette, which is what I'm going to do moving forward. And this is what people call the Kelly 20 or the Mini Kelly or the Mini Kelly 2, which is technically the correct term. But just to make things simple, I'll be calling this the Kelly Pochette and then this the Mini Kelly. So I think what we should do is we should start from the outside in and let's discuss some of the things and main differences that you'll see on the outside between these two bags. And then we can go on the inside, get into what fits in each one, which bag is more difficult to get, some styling and my personal thoughts and experiences. But I think the first thing that will stand out to you the most is the difference in size. Even though they're technically considered both a mini bag, this is actually not quite as mini as you would think it to be because the Kelly Pochette measures 22 centimeters at the base. And as you probably guessed, the Kelly 20 measures 20 centimeters on the bottom of it. Now, it's not only the base that is quite different. As you can see, the Kelly Pochette is quite a bit larger and two centimeters makes a huge difference when it comes to bags of this size, but it also just looks more spacious and just larger at the end of the day. Obviously, because the bag is longer, they wanted to keep things proportionate, so they not only increased the length of the bag, but also the height of it. And to be really honest with you, simply because of the structure of the bag, that 22 centimeter is so much easier to take advantage of than the 20 centimeters in this, because even though these bags don't technically have a return or a cellular name assigned to them, if you wanted to guess, both of these would be a cellular structure because the stitching is on the outside. And the Kelly 22 is a true cellular bag. The stitching is on the outside and it is really quite rigid and structured, which makes it quite difficult to get in and out of the bag. And you can really not get into the corners and take advantage of every single centimeter of this bag, which you kind of would want to when it comes to a small bag like this. But when it comes to the Kelly Pochette, even though the stitching is again on the outside, this is just a lot softer and sort of squishy, which means that this bag is so, so much easier to open and close and get in and out of, which allows you to really pack this to the brim without going overboard. Whereas with the Mini Kelly, it's a little bit more difficult to control. So yes, Technically, there is only two centimeters difference between the length of these two bags. That two centimeters makes a huge difference, especially because of the structure of these two bags. But I'll again check the sticker of the box or maybe even the receipt. I'm pretty sure you don't get told that this is a cellier bag, whereas when you buy this, 
I don't think the box says sell it, but the receipt might. So I'll have to double check. And if I'm mistaken, I'll correct myself on the screen here. But I'm pretty sure that Hermes closes to sell it, whereas for this one, they don't give a proper sort of grouping. But I would agree with that. This is an actual cellier. This is how you would imagine a cellier bag looking and feeling like. Whereas this one is kind of in between in terms of how it feels between a return and the cellier bag, even though the stitching is technically on the outside. The other things that I got quite a few questions on because I posted on my Instagram letting you know that I will be filming this sort of review and I was wondering if there's anything that you'd like me to touch on. And one of the biggest topics was the different groups of leathers and options that these bags are available in. So let's start with the Kelly Pochette because the Kelly Pochette is going to be much easier. Currently, the only non-exotic leather that you can go for in this specific bag is Swift, which is this one. And I was quite apprehensive about getting a bag in Swift. The only bag that I would have been willing to get in Swift was this bag. Just because Swift is such a soft leather that it's not the easiest to look after. But I was actually at an event a few weeks ago and I met, I believe she was one of the managers of the Fabork store at obviously Hermes, it was an Hermes event. And we got to talking about the different leathers. She complimented my bag. So we got to talking about the Kelly Pochette, the idea of it, the different leathers that it comes in. And I told her that I absolutely love this bag. I had been waiting for this for a long time, but I was a little bit nervous about getting a bag in Swift. But what she said, and if anyone she would know, if you've been to Paris, you know how ginormous the Fabork store is. That's the mothership of everything Hermes. And to this day, I believe they create their settles on top of the store on one of the top floors. Anyway, we got to talking about this bag and Swift. And she said that yes, Swift is quite a delicate skin. But if anything was to happen, there's a lot more that a craftsman can do with this to correct it and bring it back to life than they could do with something like Epsom. So yes, of course, you want to be careful with Swift leather because it is delicate at the end of the day. But now we have verification that it is indeed something that Hermes can take care of really nicely, which I have no doubt about because I've really seen them do some true magic. So Swift is the only leather that you can pick this up in. That's not the only regular leather that it was available in the past. In the past, this also came in Epsom, but now if you wanted to get this bag in Epsom, it would have to be a special order bag. And then when we move on to exotic skins, this bag you can get in Ostrich, Lizard, as well as Alligator, both Lise and Matt. So that are your leather options when it comes to this piece. Now, when it comes to the Mini Kelly 22, you have a lot more options. This bag pretty much comes in every single leather that you'd want it to come in, that you'd expect a Sallier bag to be launched in. So of course, Epsom is the most popular and my personal favorite, but it also comes in goat skin. It also comes in box. I've also seen it in Verenia. Those are, I think, the main sort of regular skins that it comes in. And then it also comes in all the exotic skins that the Kelly Pochette comes in. So alligator, ostrich, and lizard are all options available for you. One of the biggest differences that you'll notice on these two bags is the handle. So as you can see on the Mini Kelly, the handle is a lot more structured and it is almost exactly the handle that you are used to seeing from Hermes on their larger bags. Whereas on the Kelly Pochette, the handle is completely different. It's much more simple and it's also attached to the bag in a different way. As you can see, it is completely stitched down here. Whereas on the Kelly Pochette, just to make it multifunctional, it is actually mobile. So you can either push it down and then it goes almost completely flat or you can push it up. And the only things holding this onto the bag are these two little bands that are made of the exact same leather as the bag itself. I personally find this a lot easier to hold and use than the Mini Kelly. I don't think I've ever struggled with this, but because I have larger hands, it is not, I'm not gonna say it's not easy to hold on to because it is, but if I have to choose between the two, 
This is just a little bit more ergonomic, although I'm not sure if that's the proper term for this scenario, but you know what I mean. This is just easier to grab, whereas this one is a little bit smaller just because the entire bag is a little bit smaller. You can of course hold on to it like this, but this is going to be a little bit more user-friendly in my experience. But then other than that, the bag itself looks identical. You of course have the Kelly Twist closure. I mean, it wouldn't be a Kelly bag without it. You get the two sangles. And then if we start getting inside of the bag, if I open this up, you will see that the brand stamping is above the hardware here. And this is different than what it's going to be like on an actual Birkin, Kelly, or any other MS bag. Because if you see here, this only has two lines. So it says Hermes Paris, made in France. Whereas on a regular Hermes bag, it would be three separate lines. And then if I show you what it looks like on the Kelly pochette, there's actually no hot stamp above the hardware just because it's so close to the top of the bag. So instead they put the branding on the inside and you do get the actual proper three line Hermes branding, which says Hermes underneath Paris and then underneath that made in France. So that's going to be a big difference if you ever buy a Kelly pochette on the pre-loved market and you get one that doesn't have the hot stamp. Don't worry for a second. You should be more worried if it comes with a branding above the hardware because a proper Kelly pochette doesn't actually have the hot stamping here. Instead, it's on the inside of the bag, which I believe is the same with the Kelly Cut and for sure with the Kelly Twilly. The way these bags are set up on the inside is virtually identical. You have one large space in the middle here, and then you have a back pocket, a really, really flat back pocket that you can take advantage of on the back. I'm not sure if I said that, but obviously you're used to getting your pockets on your Birkin on the front and then having a zip pocket on the back, when it comes to Kelly's, you have two front pockets and one back pocket. On the Kelly pochettes and on the mini Kelly, you only have one large flat back pocket, which is actually amazing to have because if you are going out and you don't want to carry too much stuff with you, it has just the perfect room in there to slide an ID and your credit card and you are good to go. Now, when it comes to the inside of these bags, I would personally recommend that you get an insert for them, even though it can be a difficult hunt. I will have the insert link down below that I bought for my Mini Kelly, which I actually had to have custom made, which I know sounds a lot fancier than it actually is. All that meant that I had to give the company the measurements of this bag and they created one based on those. Because I don't think any of the insert companies, or at least not the one that I would go to, which is 7RP, has an insert for the Mini Kelly. I've been asking them for at least a year now to create one, but I don't know if they ever will. Obviously, if they do, I'll keep you posted. And don't worry, at the end of this video, I will be announcing the winner of my 7RP giveaway, which this was just the perfect reminder. For the Kelly pochette, I think it could use a little bit of support from the inside out, just because it's a little bit more of a slouchy bag. And if you look at Kelly pochettes that have been around the block for a while, you can see that they have sort of started sagging, but I have not found the perfect insert for this. Again, I asked 7RP if they could make one and they said that they'll look into it, but I have no updates at this point whether it's actually going to happen or not. Obviously, because this bag is bigger than the Kelly 20, you will be able to fit more things in here. And as I mentioned earlier, because it's easier to get in and out of, because it's not so rigid that you cannot properly open it up, means that you can take advantage of every single little millimeter that you have in this bag. Whereas this bag, you're just kind of hoping for the best. You can kind of shift things in there, but there is not too much control that you have. Whereas with this one, I would say that it fits about twice the amount as the Mini Kelly does which this already fits a ton more than you would think. So you can imagine how spacious this bag is truly is. So I have a video with super, super detailed shots on what fits in the Mini Kelly. If you'd like to see a similar video on this, sharing with you what I carry in this bag, do let me know. I didn't want to include such a detailed, you know, what's in my bag when it comes to this piece on this video, because we'd be here for hours and I don't want to bore you for that long. 
But if you'd like to see that from me, just give this video a thumbs up and I know that that's something that you'd like to see and I'll get working on it. But just to give you an idea, this fits a ton more than even the Kelly 22 does. So even though these bags share the same name, as you can probably tell already, they are quite different from one another. They are different size, they are different structure, they feature different handles. But I do think that still the easiest way of telling a mini Kelly apart from a Kelly pochette, other than by looking at the handle, is to see if it comes with a shoulder strap or if it doesn't. Because on the Kelly pochette, there is just no way for you to put a strap on this, unless you want to come up with some tricks, which I'll move on to in the styling part. A long story short, don't put a shoulder strap on this. There's just no way for you to do that safely. Whereas on the Mini Kelly, you do have these two little sort of rings up here that you can attach a shoulder strap to. And the Mini Kelly does come with an 85 centimeter shoulder strap. And that's why I said at the beginning that if you're asking for a Mini Kelly and you're not quite sure how to clarify which bag you'd like, obviously the best person to ask, the best resource to help you clarify things is the person you shop with. But if you'd like to be confident about what you're asking for, just say whether you're looking for the Kelly Mini with the shoulder strap or for the Kelly Pochette without the shoulder strap. Because I think that is going to be the key difference that makes these bags so different from one another, which some people will love, some people will hate. So the shoulder strap that comes with the Mini Kelly is 85 centimeters. If you watched my recent unboxing, you know that I ordered a longer strap, which had to be custom made by Hermes, which I have been incredibly happy with because I not only love using this bag as a clutch bag and holding onto it like this, but I find it so incredibly convenient to have a shoulder strap for this piece. Whereas you don't have that for the Kelly Pochette. So if you're someone who doesn't like holding onto their bags, you're going to dislike this bag. It's really as simple as that because you either have to hold on to it like this, you can kind of put it under one arm, but because it's in a swift leather, it makes it a little bit slippery. It does kind of move around or you can obviously hold on to the top handle. But if you want a bag that you can use hands-free, I'm just going to put it out there and be honest with you. Don't get this. You're not going to like it. I have traveled with this bag. I've been using it at least a couple of times a week ever since I got this. So I do have a true feel for what owning this bag is like. And there was really only one time I found it annoying. I went grocery shopping one day and I had this bag with me and it got quite annoying because you constantly had to hold on to it. I didn't want to put it in my basket because there was, you know, some vegetable stuff at the bottom of it. I didn't want it to get dirty or wet. So that was really the only time that I was kind of like, I do wish this bag had a shoulder strap but just know what to expect. This bag does not come with a shoulder strap. So the only way for you to use this is either to hold onto the top handle or use it as a clutch bag like this, which is personally what I prefer. Whereas with this bag, obviously you can hold onto the top handle. You can use it as a clutch bag if you want to have it um, be appropriate for a more formal setting, or you can easily attach the shoulder strap that it comes with or you can obviously buy an additional shoulder strap from Hermes. You don't have to do a crazy amount of research online to find some resources on how to turn this bag into a mini Kelly by adding a shoulder strap onto this. But if you ask for my thoughts and my opinion and what I'm going to do with my bag, I am not going to put a shoulder strap on this just because this bag is so soft and so delicate and fragile that you can do quite a bit of damage by adding something like a chain onto this bag. Some people that are mess will even tell you that you can buy a Ferrandol necklace or you can buy a shoulder strap and clip it on on the inside and then add it onto this bag, which if you're going to do something, do the leather strap because I think that would do the least amount of damage or you can do a maxi twilly and use that as a strap, but I wouldn't do a chain. I wouldn't even really do a belt. I really wouldn't I personally just wouldn't add a shoulder strap onto this in any way because it's a trick that you guys know I love. I love using my Kelly wallet, my Constant Slim as different things and making them multifunctional. 
but I do think that you could do quite a bit of damage on this bag if you try to use this as a crossbody bag because number one it's quite a large bag which you can pack and if you do this will become quite heavy and then the other thing the reason why I don't think this bag would be able to take it unless you're doing it for a picture or you're going to an event with virtually nothing inside of your bag is because this bag is so soft that I don't think that this part of the bag would be able to take it. You can feel that there is some sort of a reinforcement up here just because of the handle. But I do think that these parts would start sort of peeling up if you used a handle or something like that on it, especially if you're using a chain. You can actually rip inside of the leather. So personally, I just wouldn't recommend that you put a shoulder strap onto this. If you'd like a shoulder strap, go for this bag, go for a Kelly 25, which does come with a shoulder strap, maybe even go for a Kelly Dons if you like the way it looks. But this and a shoulder strap, two things just don't go hand in hand. Based on all of this information, please let me know in the comment section which bag you would go for. Would you opt for the Kelly 20 or would you prefer the Kelly Pochette? I would love to know. Me personally, even though I'm extremely grateful to have both of these bags in my collection, I have bought three of these in total and I have only found obviously one of these bags that I enjoyed. Based on what I know today, even though I love both of these designs, I do think I have to go for the Kelly Pochette. Yes, I found it kind of not annoying. I think that would be a strong word to use, but I found it a little bit inconvenient to use once during the past two months. So yes, it doesn't have a shoulder strap, but just because of the proportions, the shape, the structure, and how easy it is to use, I think I would prefer this bag. And moving forward, I think this is the bag that I'll be asking for over the Mini Kelly. I love both of them. As I said, I'm still a big advocate of this bag. I think you can do a lot more with this than you would think because it fits a lot more. It's more appropriate than a lot of people assume when they first see this bag. But for me personally, just because it's so user friendly, I think I would go for the Cali Pochette because it's just easier to get in and out of. And you can really take advantage of, of every single corner of this bag. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to be happy to hear this after what I just said. But in my experience, the Cali Pochette is much more difficult to get than the Mini Kelly. Some of you were kind enough to share with me your intel and your insights into the local boutiques. Some of you said that this is easier to get in your country, while others said that this is much easier to get than the Cali Pochette. I can only share with you my experience uh, of shopping in the US and in Europe for these two bags. And let me just tell you the numbers and you can decide for yourself what you think. So over the past, four to five years, I would say, maybe four, I've been offered six of these maybe, and I bought three, which obviously is a great number. They're very difficult to get, but I'm really lucky that I've been able to find some that I really enjoyed. Whereas when it comes to this bag, and even though this was the bag that I would have preferred over this one, I've only been offered a couple of these, Neither of the bags that I was offered, I would have considered, even though I was beyond grateful because I know how difficult these bags are to come by. But I think one of them was in a red, shiny alligator, and then the other one was maybe a pop of color, neither one of which I would have been interested in. So that should tell you that I was able to find three of these that I liked, and I found one of these. So. I don't know, That's this has been my experience and based on that I would say that this is more difficult to get and on top of that, if you look on the pre-loved market if you're looking for this bag, even though you won't see a ton of this and even the ones you, you will see have probably been sold because as soon as any one of these hit the pre-loved market, they go almost immediately. But they do have some of them out there whereas when it comes to this bag, you rarely see this pop up on the pre-love market, on the resale market, and you rarely even see this bag as a display piece or even as a piece that they display in their windows, which just tells me that they 
probably put this style on the back burner since this launched. Obviously this piece launched in 2015 and it was supposed to be a limited edition bag. And I do find that since this bag has been around, I've been seeing less and less of these. Now I do have a hunch or a suspicion or a conspiracy theory, but this is not a fact. I don't want to start any rumors, but I do have, this is just something that is in my head, but I do believe that at one point the Kelly 22 will be discontinued. It's not going to be today, it's not going to be tomorrow, it might not even be this year or this decade, but I can see RMS discontinuing this at one point, whereas I don't think it would happen with the Cali Pochette. So if you love both, maybe you want to go for this first and then have this as your second bag, obviously given which one is easier to get. But personally, if I could only choose one, for me, I think the Kelly Pochette would be the winner. And before I let you guys go, I wanted to announce the winner of the 7RP giveaway. If you have not been aware, I've been doing a giveaway with 7RP for just about the past two weeks. And we finally have a winner. Even though I haven't picked a person yet, because this video I'm filming a few days before it goes live. And I want to give you guys as much time as I possibly can to enter. So just as this video goes live, I will pick the winner randomly, of course, and I'll put their name up here. So if you see your username appear here, congratulations, you're the winner of the giveaway. Please make sure to get in touch with me within a couple of days. You don't have to send me any of your personal information. All of that will go directly to 7RP. Just send me an email, say hi, so I can put you in touch with the 7RP team. And maybe include your Instagram handle just so I can send that to 7RP too, so they can double check that you follow them over on Instagram as well. But that is it. Thank you so much to everyone for participating. And if you didn't win this time, actually don't worry because 7RP was kind enough to give us an exclusive offer for the next week. They are really kind of giving us an increased discount code. So if you ever thought about picking up an insert from 7RP, this is your chance because you can save a little bit more money than you would otherwise. So if you wanted to get one insert from 7RP, you could buy one with 35 euros off with the code IMGPS35. Or if you'd like to pick up two, maybe two for yourself, because let's be honest, you deserve it. Or if you want to buy one for yourself and one for a friend, you can save 75 euros off with the code IMGPS75. I'll make sure to have all these details linked down below for you. And I hope every little helps. This discount code is only valid from today until next Sunday. So just keep that in mind. You don't have too much time to use it, but with the holiday season coming up, this might be your chance to add a new insert to your collection or buy one for a friend because they do make an incredible gift. I really hope you enjoyed this video and the giveaway too. Thank you so much to all of you for participating and to 7RP for helping me host it and congratulations to the winner. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon. But for now, bye.